Welcome to the Nutramedical Report live for Wednesday, the 20th of June, and we have Hardy Schlanger with a tremendous lineup of reports. The latest, of course, is that the president has used executive privilege, which is a form of executive order, to prevent his man, Mr. Eric Holder, from recruiting himself, from, from uh, basically giving evidence that shows not only is Eric Holder and the Department of Justice guilty with the Fast and Furious uh, gun running scheme with the ATF, but also that the president himself is obviously showing he's involved uh, with making decisions just like he does with his baseball cards, the cards of death. Uh, game that he's playing with the uh, Predator drones. So, um, Harley, what's the latest analysis of what's going on with the Abominator? What's happening? Well, I'll tell you, I, if I were a Republican, I would be kicking myself for nominating someone as incompetent as Romney because almost any decent Republican should be able to mop the floor with Obama. He's had another absolutely horrible week. Uh, the fact that they had to use executive privilege to protect Holder and the president on Fast and Furious shows you how fast and far he's fallen. He's depending for his election on being able to keep the lie going that the economy's in good shape. And what's happening in Europe right now is not going to hold up. The, the fact that the stock market went up a little bit yesterday because of the lies that Greece has solved and now they've got to solve Spain. Uh, we can get into this, but the whole situation in Europe is, is set to blow, and it will blow right into the uh, Federal Reserve in the United States. What but I heard is that thing, the billions of dollars are leaving literally daily. All these pigs countries, and now the last week, the zero bonds in Germany, meaning they're buying bonds at zero percent. It means that the euro is already dead, but they don't want to admit it for at least until post-election time. And then they're going to try to resurrect some kind of new financial system. This is uh, the game is over. This idea well, that the euro is going to survive. Have, you also have the Swiss saying that they will take only a limited amount of euros. And if I were a sovereign banker in another country that didn't use the euro, I wouldn't take any euros because the euro may go into a hyperinflationary collapse. And why would you give them Swiss francs or U.S. dollars for a currency that, that already has rest in peace as its new motto? Well, I think what they plan on doing, and this is what Obama's plan, is to use the Federal Reserve to print as much trillions of dollars as necessary under any scheme to, to resurrect the G20 euro. The euro will be part of this new basket of currency I call the basket case. And they want to, in the process, they'll probably have caused a bank holiday in Europe and here in America and massively devalue the currency, which means we're going to have hyperinflation at an enormous pace after this event happens. Well, that's, that's exactly the direction they're going. And, in fact, uh, Obama is doing two things. He has Tim Geithner almost full-time deployed on two issues. One, getting Merkel to give up her opposition to Eurobonds, which is the way they're going to try and cover the bailout. And right. Merkel is stubbornly sticking to that. Now, she's bad on a lot of things, but on this thing she may be the only thing saving Europe right now. And secondly, Geithner is working with former Federal Reserve Chairman Paul Volcker to stop the momentum toward a Glass-Steagall bill in the U.S. House of Representatives. We picked up this week from Representative Michael Burgess, a Republican from North Texas, who had been leaning toward supporting the H.R. 1489, the, the Marcy Captor bill to restore Glass-Steagall, which really is a simple bill. It's 30 pages, and it says go back to the original 1933 Glass-Steagall bill. Uh, Burgess had told one of our supporters that he was leaning toward backing it at a town meeting about six months ago. So he had a town meeting the other night in, I think, Denton, Texas. There were a 1,000 people there, and our supporter asked him, are you now going to go with Glass-Steagall? And Burgess said, I just finished a 45-minute discussion with Paul Volcker. Volcker told me we don't need Glass-Steagall, that in fact the Volcker rules will work. Now, the Volcker rules will not work because they were actually, the only reason the Volcker rules were written was to keep Glass-Steagall out. But Volcker is telling congressmen now that they have to oppose Glass-Steagall because Glass-Steagall is the radical proposal of Lyndon LaRouche designed to collapse the banking system. Now, in fact, LaRouche's design of Glass-Steagall is the only thing that would save the banking system, not as a speculative casino system, but as a system that would be available 
to protect depositors' deposits and to provide credit for future production. So we caught Volcker in an absolute lie, but Volcker is working with Obama and Geithner to do this. And so we see the, the corruption, the fraud, to protect the swindles that have gone on for the last 40 years in the U.S. economy. Yeah, and of course, uh, Volcker's statements in the past have been that it's the only currency of the globalist is money, is gold. And so what's happening is they want to collapse the world economy toward a system where uh, credit worldwide collapses and they form a new financial order and the, the debt just disappears into a black hole. And they have well, all the assets gonna, of the planet. And they're not going to take the debt off the shoulders of the American taxpayers or the German taxpayers, because that's ultimately... They well, they're going to make their... their they're going to make their their assets disappear. It's presto change. Oh, no more yeah, assets. Exactly. No more middle. No more our middle class. Assets, yeah. Our yeah. assets disappear, and their debt disappears also. Exactly. So that they're able to then come in and buy up anything they want because they'll be the only ones who have credit. Right, and the only ones with credit, they'll basically buy up everything in a fire sale, and the rest of us will be slaves in a in a matrix type system where the new financial system that comes about will have biometric uh, electronic funds transfer currency where your opening and code will be your retinal scan, your facial uh, body terahertz scan, uh, or 10 digital fingerprints, and everything will be in their system in total control over the population, and the middle class will be wiped out. That's what's well, coming. I, if we don't stop them, if we don't get Glass-Steagall in to stop the swindle of the bailouts, uh, we probably aren't going to be around to see that because you actually, if you think about what happens if money is no longer worth anything and the banking system is no longer able to give you back what you've put into it, if your credit cards are canceled, if the credit accounts of grocery stores and trucking companies are canceled, how are people going to eat? How are people? Well, how many, the average family has three hundred dollars of money in their home. Exactly. And so, if you let's say the swift transfer is stopped, and all credit cards, including most gas people buy gasoline or groceries, whatever, is stopped, uh, what are people going to do? Uh, how point. how is commerce? Commerce will grind to a very screeching halt, and literally, people will start starving to death after the third day when they run out of food in their home. Their gasoline runs out, and they can't even drive away to go to refuge. And when people try to fight. They're going to get hit by drones because we're dealing with a president who's a stone cold killer who's operating on behalf well, of financial they're, elite. They're deploying 200,000 drones over America, and many of them can be weaponized. Yeah, so we're dealing with a new form of police state dictatorship with a new form of dictator. And by the way, Obama is, is replaceable. They, they, they would easily get rid of him if. Uh, as the population gets more and more angry, you could replace him with Romney. You could replace him with a teleprompter for all these guys are concerned. All they're concerned about is that the American people sit around whining and complaining, but don't fight until it's too late and we've lost everything. And we're yeah. very close to that moment right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Amazing, isn't it? And that's why, in the next segment, I want to talk to you about how President Putin stood up to Obama and totally freaked Obama out, so that Obama canceled his last meetings at the uh, Los Cabos summit because of his uh, nervous reaction to what Putin did with him. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, despite the fact that the media lied that said they were in total agreement, even though their body language was not very good. Well, the, the, the problem is that uh, the media... Are, are playing this little game back and forth with Obama. They're, they're doing unflattering photos at the same time. Uh, they're trying to, to to continue to play this game of, well, he's not totally incompetent. He's not a rookie that's actually a psychopathic rookie. Uh, he's not actually going to destroy the economy or even uh, proceed with arming the Israelis to start a nuclear war. Uh, and the Russians and Chinese have stated with their new war game starting in a week, this is not going to happen. Any invasion of Syria and Iran is not going to happen, not on their watch. This is not a proxy war. This is tempting World War III, is what it is. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Uh, Harley, let's talk about the intelligence reports and the intelligence manipulation by Israel, 
through uh, various channels. Uh, the issue that we talked about in the news yesterday, that was a quick report uh, with Tim Alexander, that we have to vet and be, ter- be certain what's going on. The Russians are not backing off. The latest meeting where Obama had to storm out because he was flanked by Putin. Uh, the issue that the Israelis have, have leaked through World Net Daily, the issue of arming their uh, Jericho 2 and 3 missiles, uh, the so-called war games, which uh, your report suggests that there aren't war games, but they certainly are not backing off, and the Russians and Chinese have made it very clear they're not going to tolerate an air invasion or ground invasion. They put forward uh, radar uh, protective equipment in Damascus, Syria, and in Tehran, uh, and the S-380 aircraft system is fully operational now over both. The Russians are resupplying their base, their naval base in Tarshish, which is in Syria, um, this situation is going to get a lot worse if they uh, continue to push. And Obama has already promised the Israelis to have all the armaments and bunker buster GB-58 bombs, but uh, just delayed until after the elections. He's, and, of course, the schemes that Obama is doing, he's going to try to see if he can outflank the uh, Republicans in terms of dealing with the issue of, quote, illegals. Now, uh, you know, well, let, I let, see. Let me, let me yeah. pick up on this Russian thing because this is really important. Because most right. of the world's press, including some of the alternative press, were trapped into a, a lie by the Israelis. Now, what happened with the Putin Obama meeting is really important uh, because, as you said, and, and as LaRouche has been emphasizing, Putin is not bluffing and he's not going to back down. Putin has made it clear that Russia will not allow an attack on Assad and Syria by the outside countries, including the United States. Uh, and yet a communique, uh, the, original, uh, the initial report put out by Obama's people on the Putin-Obama meeting said that Putin had agreed to a peaceful transition to a post-Assad period. Now, what in fact the actual communique said, and I read the communique, is that Number one, both sides have to agree to full implementation of the Kofi Annan plan. Now, so far, the United States has taken the attitude that the Annan plan is dead, and therefore you have to go to get rid of Syria. But the Russians and the rest of the world are saying you should give the Annan plan a chance. The key thing that's sabotaging the Annan plan is the Saudis, the British, and the U.S. are giving arms to the rebels in so-called rebels in Syria, which includes Libyan al-Qaeda, Iraq al-Qaeda, and so on. So first of all, Obama had his office lie about the communique. Now secondly, what actually happened in their meeting, and the media is full of these stories about body language, as though that actually tells you something. What happened in their private meeting is Putin lectured Obama. And he said to Obama, when Obama was trying to talk about how brutal Assad is, Putin said, how well is your transition working in Iraq? And everyone knows there have been daily atrocities, terrorist bombings, shootings, killings, beheadings in Iraq. It's, it's, a, it's a completely disaster, a disastrous situation. Then Putin said, how well is your transition going in Libya? How well is your transition going in Egypt? In each of these places, the situation is more unstable and dangerous than before you got involved. Don't you think you should think about that before you get more involved in Syria? <laughs> now, the That's report really is that, that Obama started staring at the floor and did not respond. And then you see when they let the press in, Putin is sitting there looking very calm, and Obama is fidgeting and looking at the floor when he gives his report on how it was a good meeting and the reset is working and everything's going fine. And then Obama, who is scheduled after that to go into a meeting with Chancellor Merkel, uh, David Cameron, and Hollande, skipped the meeting on the European financial situation uh, because they said his aides were saying that he was too overbooked. But the reality is he was too emotionally overloaded. He had somewhat of a mini breakdown when he saw that Putin is not going to give in to the bluff that Obama was set up to do. Exactly. Now, Then immediately before this, there was a story out about how a Russian ship was turned back because it was bringing weapons to Assad. Now, in fact, the ship was not bringing weapons. It was turned back because its insurance had been canceled as part of the sanctions. So, And that was a Russian uh, private ship 
but three government, three military ships from Russia are going to Syria, and they're bringing a lot of new and uh, updated military equipment for the Russian base, as, as you mentioned. The Russia has a port, a base at the port in Syria, and. At the same time, the Israelis put out through the FARS news agency, the Iranian news agency, that the biggest military maneuvers ever in the Mideast are going to start next week with Iran, Syria, Russia, and China. And so this was immediately used by the Pentagon to, to have a freak out and, and by others. And the Russians called General Dempsey, the head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and said, we're not having military maneuvers, but we are resupplying our forces in Syria. So you can see how the media is trying to build up this environment of, of accepting, getting the population to accept military intervention in Syria, when in fact a U.S. or NATO military in intervention in Syria will lead to a head-to-head -head confrontation with Russia and also the Chinese, and the Russians are not backing down. Yeah, so exactly. Obama's big bluff was called and he came scurrying back to the United States, destabilized. Now then, obviously, someone came up with this idea to protect Obama and Holder by declaring executive privilege, and they're saying, well, Bush did it, Clinton did it. Yeah, they did, but never on an issue that involved a potentially criminal action in a cover-up by the Attorney General. And then the third area of complete destabilization is that Spain and Italy are heading into this next week with their interest rates on their bonds going through the roof. It's unsustainable. The new government in Greece is going to get a modification of the austerity, which means the whole plan that was supposed to be ratified, the Geithner, Bernanke, Cameron plan, has been blown apart in Europe. And so Obama is seeing his re-election chances going out the window. Well, his That's best hope is uh, Romney. Dangerous. His best hope is Romney, who's an incompetent. Yeah. And that's also when Obama becomes dangerous, because then he goes into his, his uh, trance mental state and starts ordering killings. And by the way, the U.N. Special Rapporteur of the Human Rights Commission handed in a 28-page report attacking the United States drone policy as a major human rights violation. And they said that in cases like this involving third world dictatorships, there are legal actions to bring the persons behind it to court for murder. The implication being that maybe the UN Human Rights Commission is going to come with a subpoena to Barack Obama for committing murder of civilians with this drone policy. And wow. it would be good if they did it before he starts killing Americans. Yeah, well, I think that uh, with the 200,000 drones on their way back to America, uh, you can be certain that his policy does include that. Yeah. Amazing. Back in a moment with Harley Schlanger. The phone number to call if you want more information is 800-922-2907. LaRouchePAC.com, LaRouchePUV.com. And Harley, um, we're seeing basically what you're saying is the Europe and the Europe and the Euro are done. That these countries can't service their debt. We also have the fulcrum factor. We won't get into the details in this show, but uh, Japan is about to have a major catastrophic radiation release. And I've presented information to Senator Wyden to try to start doing testing. I think the combination of these perfect storms converging. The best hope of Obama is none other than, than Mitt Romney. Mitt Romney should be ripping Obama apart. I can't believe that he used executive privilege to try to cover up Eric Holder, who's obviously guilty of sin, uh, and uh, to deal with these issues. And the fact that uh, Putin is giving him a uh, geopolitical spanking in public, and yet the media are not kind of going at like like piranhas at the bones of Obama is kind of bizarre. Uh, I just don't understand why they think they can get away with this. And then Obama passes more and more executive orders. I have a list of executive orders he's done since he's been in presidency. And the, the past executive orders are bad enough, but the ones Obama's done, 
and the bills he's passed, like the National Defense Authorization Act and the Expatriation Act, are so obscene. It's like, are we in an alternate dimension? What it, what the heck is going on? <laughs> well, look, the the media is will probably never report on what's actually happening with Obama. Yeah, because the media does represent the really inside view of the uh, of the establishment. And the establishment is trying, like hell, to keep these things out of the public as long as they can, because their whole policy is to go with these things. And so what we're dealing with is a, a media which is very much uh, corrupt, as, as most of your listeners know. Now, the problem is, it's not enough just to say the media is corrupt, because the real issue here is not just the corruption of the media, but the fact that there is a possibility of defeating them because fewer and fewer people are actually depending on the media. If you think about it, there's, there's more people today than ever who go to what are called alternative media sources, which include your program, which include right. websites. Which is why uh, CNN's lost half their audience. And guess where they've yeah. gone? They've gone to Genesis Network. They've gone to this show, Alex Jones. They go to other alternative network programs. Uh, you know, like every Tuesday night, I'm on, I, as a guest on the Rensman Network, and others would like to have me, but I'm so darn busy just doing everything I do, preparing things for Senator Wyden, preparing things for AMAC to present to the Senate this coming next week. People need to realize the regular media, they're finished as well. CNN, Fox News Network, and they're scrambling, trying to lie, even what I call lies at the speed of light. It's unbelievable how nervy they are thinking they're going to get away with this, and they know... They're toast. The regular media are toast because people don't trust them anymore. Well, you know, you remember there was all this talk in the uh, early, well, in the, in the 1960s, there were reviews of wars in the past, and there were the, these books written about what they called yellow journalism. And the prime case study was that of William uh, Randolph Hearst and his pushing for the war against Spain in Cuba and how they use this largely to build up the idea of the U.S. as an empire, and Teddy, playing the Teddy Roosevelt, who was the so-called hero of the uh, uh, one of the rides, the Rough Rider group uh, operating in, in Cuba. But this is something that people actually know exists. But what I just reported in the last segment about how they were trying to whip up a new Cold War confrontation with Russia... The one thing that's interesting, and I think we talked about this last week, is when LaRouche said the reason we haven't already had a nuclear war is because of two people, Vladimir Putin, by not capitulating, and secondly, General Dempsey, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who knows much better than Obama and others why we have to avoid these kinds of fights. These kinds Maybe we of should wars. have a, a, a rock star shirt with Dempsey and Putin on it say, Go Dempsey and Putin, stop World War Three. Well, that would be an accurate shirt, so probably no one would buy it because it, it, it's not enough of a fantasy. But I, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'll tell you the thing, the, uh, it reminds me of the T-shirt that they were selling last year at Martha's Vineyard uh, when Obama was up there vacationing, and it had a picture of Bush with that, you know, what, eating grin on his face, and it said, Miss Me Yet? <laughs> it was the best-selling T-shirt. No, but you see, what, what we're facing is a short fuse to war. And very short. This is, this is something that very few Americans realize. Secondly, very few Americans realize how quickly a hyperinflation can take off. And there was a, a conference the other day in Germany where a professor who's an expert on the Weimar hyperinflation in 1923, uh, he was asked to discuss how this thing happens, why we haven't seen hyperinflation yet with all the bailouts in the U.S. and Europe. And he used an analogy that I think everyone understands. He called it the ketchup bottle problem. You know when you have a bottle of ketchup, a, a good bottle of ketchup, and you're trying to get the ketchup out, and you're shaking and shaking, and then none of it comes out, and then all of a sudden it explodes out of the bottle, right. and all over the plate and everything? He said that's what happens with hyperinflation. By the time you get the ketchup out of the bottle, there's going to be way too much, and you can't stop it. Well, here's what I expect as a timeline. And uh, 
Number one, I expect midsummer we're going to have a massive radiation release in Japan, which will cause at least a partial evacuation of Tokyo and the Tokyo surrounding area around Fukushima. Today, around noontime, the Goshan, which is this uh, Typhoon Class 5, is actually hitting Fukushima, which is going to cause a massive radiation bubble or burst or bur burp or whatever you want to call it. It's going to now be pushed eastward toward us. <clears throat> we have the Japan being the second largest creditor nation. I think the combination of that and the fact that there really is not just reports from Steve Quayle and others, but many others that says the euro is dead. These nations cannot service their debt. No matter how much they try to rearrange the deck chairs, it's over. The euro is dead. Obama's well, trying this, to... This became clear from the G20 meeting, where I, I think I told you off the air, one of the things they did is the IMF said they need $430 billion as a firewall to, to have the money available in case you have a, a run on, on the banks in, in uh, Italy, Spain, or some of these other countries. Right. Now, what you I know, expect to happen is by, by the fall, the only solution the British Empire have always had is war or invasion. But the war right yeah. now, war is obsolete. We can't start any wars. There's no such thing as a proxy war anymore with Syria and Iran. This is not like a Libya or Tunisia. If these wars are started, it's obvious from the dialogue from Putin and from the Hu Jintao from China and their Chinese generals, this will immediately accelerate to a World War III scenario. So what they really are, they're playing cards for the financial side of the New World Order. That's why I don't think it's going to be a global conflict. Uh, right away. I think it'll be down the road. But, you, but I think what we're likely never... facing is the fall. We're going to see a bank holiday as the euro collapses and there's literally internal revolution in these European countries as they can't service their debt. These other countries, small countries in Europe, don't even have alternative cash to buy basic things like medicine for their sick or dying people, yeah. foodstuffs or staples. We're literally facing economic Eden. And economic Eden is going to happen by this fall. It, they'll resurrect it, and what they want to do is what uh, they're doing is this is a controlled demolition of the world economy, like 9-11. Remember, it's 11 years after 9-11. They want a controlled demolition of the world economy, and America is ready, set to go with an electronic funds transfer world currency control system that they'll tie to the G20, and they want to create these euro bonds. They want to have literally America guarantee them through the Fed Reserve. We won't be in control of our Hamiltonian credit system anymore. We'll be tied to this monster world economic order but and you, eventually you can, electronic money which is I, what I expect starting this fall will be moving very swiftly after the crisis to a short bank holiday probably no more than five days to a couple of weeks but they'll have devalued the currency in America possibly as much as a third or a quarter of what it currently is and that means we're going to see massive hyperinflation almost immediately and uh, it's going to get ugly, let's put it that way, and I think it'll happen. And you can never underestimate what happens by miscalculation because they're not in control of this process right now. They no, they're not. They, they want to pretend they are. That's why they have to pretend to their own colleagues that, oh, don't worry, we're in control of the chaos. No, the chaos masters like the sorcerer's apprentice are not in control. Welcome back, and yes, everybody does want to rule the world. Of course, we need to get Glass-Steagall in. How many sponsors are now ready for that bill, and how close are we to it? And how close are we also to a call Obamagate actually kind of blowing apart because uh, Daryl Issa isn't backing down with a demand to make a declaration that Eric Holder is in contempt of Congress. I think today this is really going to start getting real gritty. This is going to be a, you know, like uh, a, uh, how could I say a, Obama gate moment. I think we're literally moving toward that very quickly. And Eric Holder is going to be the playing card that I think is going to deal Obama a death blow. We, we, we don't see, though, move on the part of, of the Republican Party to really kind of do a final blow to, against Obama so no, he's not electable. That's, that's the problem. You have Boehner and Cantor who are doing backpedaling behind ICE's back. And this is, look, how many of the Democrats wanted to get go with an impeachment against uh, Bush and Cheney for the lies that got us into Iraq. But the Democratic Party kept Bush and Cheney in office because they figured, let them stay in office and then we'll win the next election. 
Now, that's playing games of the future of the country. That's party above principle. Now you've got Republicans doing the same thing. They figure the worst things are for Obama. Let's make him twist in the wind, but let him stay in and then elect Romney. Now, I'm telling you, Mitt Romney is controlled by the same people who control Obama. He's just talking out of a different side of his mouth. But the problem is, if you play those games, you're demeaning the American people. You're taking them out of it. Because Americans know that Obama's a criminal. I would say probably a third of this country would be ready to believe, if you presented the evidence, that Obama's a criminal. And once the evidence was presented, probably two-thirds would be ready to throw him out. So why aren't they doing that? because they're playing games. And on the Democratic side, we saw something interesting this week. The governor of West Virginia and the senator, Manchin, from West Virginia, both Democrats, said they will not be going to the Democratic convention in Charlotte because they have as much problem with Obama as they do with Romney. Now, if we get a few more Democrats doing that, so that it becomes clear, and by the way, Darrell Issa says he has 31 Democrats ready to vote for a contempt citation against Holder. So why are Boehner and Cantor holding it up? Yeah, exactly. Why are they? Well, I think they're playing a game, a practical politics game. Partly, and there's one other thing to consider here. As much as the Republican leadership attacks Obama, they couldn't have had a better patsy in office. Obama's policies, for example, with the uh, banking system, he did the bailouts by sticking with the Dodd-Frank bill. He made sure there was no new regulation. We saw that from the J.P. Morgan Chase debacle. Uh, on health care, he made sure the insurance companies and the pharmaceutical companies were taken care of while the uh, sick, the poor, the elderly were kicked to the curb. He's done exactly what the Republicans would have done. So the, for Boehner and uh, Cantor, they're perfectly happy to, to have Obama stay in the White House. Yeah, exactly. He's not so really words, running a different policy. Yeah, in other words, it's useful for them and their particular plans. Uh, we have, by the way, next week the health care policy coming forward from the, United, from the uh, Supreme Court. And we've had our experts on talking about this yesterday. Daniel Weber from AMAC, the alternative to the AARP. What does the LaRouche Foundation think of what's going to happen if they say they just strike down the mandate, but to keep the rest of the health care bill intact? That's what they think is most likely to happen. Well, I think we cannot rely on the Supreme Court because I don't think the Supreme Court represent real patriots. But I do think they probably will strike down the mandate. Now, the question then is, does anything remain of the policy? The whole thing about the mandate, as you know from Massachusetts, what Romney did, is that if you're going to get the insurance companies to cover everyone, you have to give them uh, the, the mandatory policy holders so that the government pays for those people who can't pay for themselves. And then what do they do? They issue crappy insurance policies, which will never be used, but the, the money comes from the government. So if you recognize that the mandate is a constitutional violation, then really the whole bill is going to collapse because that's the only way it made sense economically. Now, what's more dangerous to me, and I, I think the whole bill should be thrown out and people should run for Congress insisting that this bill be thrown out as a, as a genocidal bill. What needs to happen beyond that, though, is that we need to get Glass-Steagall, we need a jobs program like NAWAPA, and the only way you get these things is throwing Obama out. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, Obama, through Tim Geithner and Volcker, is trying to intimidate Democrats from supporting the Glass-Steagall legislation that already has 67 co-sponsors. And so I think it's really important that we get every Democrat and every patriotic Republican to back Glass-Steagall not just because Volcker's uh, against it, but because this is the best way to stop the bailouts, to reorganize the banking system, and also it'll probably drive Obama over the edge. Right, over the edge, you mean he may do something really, really dangerous, or do you think that he may become so unglued that they have to use the amendments to remove him from office completely? 
I think it's the latter, that, that Obama is showing signs of extreme weakness right now, and it wouldn't be that difficult to get rid of him if we had a commitment in the Congress. And I think the way you get a commitment in the con Congress is that you make it around policy. So um, what do you see as a timeline of where this is going, say, in the next, uh, say, 12 months? Well, I'm looking at really the next uh, 30 days, because I think the, the next week there's a European Union foreign ministers meeting, then there's a, I mean, the finance ministers, then a heads of state meeting, and then by the, July 1st they were supposed to have the European stability mechanism in place to do the bailouts that they need to do. There's no way it's going to be done by then. And by, the way, and, done. Uh, by the way, in less than two weeks, the oil embargo against Iran becomes active against every country except for Russia and China. And yes. the Kirk Amendment allowed Russia and China to actually subvert the so-called embargo against European countries. So the only ones that will suffer is Europe, which is further going to cripple their economies of Greece, Italy, and Spain. I mean, it's just That's exactly insanity. Right. Although what's happening now is the Russians are talking about making a private agreement with Greece, and who knows, maybe Greece will leave the Eurozone and, and join up with Russia and Serbia. By the way, very interesting, one thing to watch, there is a court ruling in Germany which is going to make it harder for them to pass the European stability mechanism in Germany. One of the stories going out now is the only way to save the Euro is to have Germany leave the Euro and let the Euro be devalued. And then maybe the Germans will uh, participate in a, a, a real bailout plan. I don't know that that's going to happen. But what I see is a, a completely insane scenario coming up in the next weeks. Uh, I mentioned to you also off the air, uh, Greece is dealing with a 350 billion euro crisis. Italy is 1.9 trillion. And that's why I say in the next 30 days, they're going to have to come up with some way to deal with these things. And I don't think they have it. I don't think they have a plan. I don't think they can get the money. Yeah, it's a virtual certainty. It's a certainty that Japan's going to have a radiation release. It's a certainty that Europe's going to collapse. It's a certainty that before the election, Obama is willing to do almost anything in order to try to get reelected. For example, his statement that he's going to, uh, without... Congress, because Congress should deal with this properly, and, and this is an issue that I want to bring up now in the waiting minute. People that have come to America to work that are not criminals should have a process that they can, over a period of, say, seven years, become citizens of the United States. If they're criminals, even if they have performed duties as members of the uh, military that are joined in uh, San Salvador or some other country, uh, they should be allowed to have citizenship. Uh, if people want to work in the if you want to work in the United States, and we need people here in California to provide all kinds of services that are unskilled, uh, we shouldn't be abusing people or making them walk through the desert and dying. Uh, and we need to deal with a quote illegal issue. But when we deal with criminals, it's a whole different thing. We don't want open borders, but we want a process where when we need workers, we can get those workers and they can come to America if they're not criminals and they're going to build up America just like all of the the statement that. Ellis Island, you know, bring us your poor and huddled masses. I mean, where are they? Where is that statement? Uh, right now, the poor and huddled masses are the former middle class. Exactly. And they want to, what they're trying to do is they have, is they put Glass-Steagall, they also need to put in a bill as a companion to it to prevent investment in globalism. And that means state pension, pension funds and state municipalities and countries investing in globalism. That's the primary problem that we talked about with Walter Burian and Glass-Steagall. And then the world banking hegemony will collapse. Thank you, Hurley. Back in uh, two weeks next week. And a special guest from...